Greetings to you in Jesus name. We've already come to the third day of our faith teaching. I remember the first day we spoke about the working of faith. Uh, yesterday we spoke about the walk of faith and today I will want to add to that and talk about the dynamics of faith and actually faith killers and faith boosters. The word faith, the acronym for the word faith is, is for in all I trust him. That's F-A-I-T-H. For in all I trust him. That is faith. Faith is the capacity to believe in God wholeheartedly as it is written in the scriptures without any doubt. That is the faith that we are talking about. The Bible makes it clear to trust in the Lord with all our heart. Lean not to your own understanding. What did the Bible say? Trust in the Lord with all of your heart, not even 99%. So the capacity to trust the Lord 100%. If he said it, it will come to pass. That is faith. That drives us to action. The prodigal son, when he left his father's house, encountered various trouble, decided one day to return back home. The day he decided was still not good enough because it was not action. He was hoping that he would see his father very soon. But the day he took his first step towards his father's house, that is faith. So I've been making a mention that faith is a walk. Faith is an action. Faith is not just I believe, faith is action. So if faith is an action, I also connected faith as referring to it being a spiritual muscle. In other words, it can be exercised. I did mention that every single one of you watching me has the capacity to grow faith. And I also made a mention according to Romans chapter 12, verse number three, it is given to us by the Lord, um, the measure of faith. That means God has given us the spiritual muscle called faith. For some, it is unused, unutilized. Therefore, of a little bit of weight on our belief system can shake us. But for those of us who have exercised this muscle, the storms of life cannot shake them. Even in this season, let me speak to you. The storms of life cannot shake you, provided your faith is strong in the Lord and the power of his might. We made a mention yesterday about how the Lord told his disciples, we are going to the other side. If he said it, we will go. The storms may encounter us during our journey, but that's not going to hinder us. Why? Because the Lord is on our side. Who shall I be afraid? Praise the name of the Lord. Before we go in today, I would like to talk about two important people in the Bible very, very briefly, because Jesus appreciated their faith. Remember, we made a mention of it in day one, according to Hebrews chapter 11, verse six, without faith, it is impossible. The Lord said impossible. If the Lord said impossible, it is impossible. Can you imagine this? We may sing worship songs. We may attend service. We can do all these things pertaining to life and godliness. But if we don't have faith, the Lord says, sorry, I am not pleased with you. So the reason why we are doing this, this, this particular uh, series, uh, I'm telling you, I'm so excited about faith because we want your faith to grow. I want to thank Bishop Peter for giving me this opportunity. I honor this relationship. He and his dear wife and every OFC member and whoever is watching, may the Lord boost your faith as we listen to this. So as I made a mention of it yesterday, faith is the key to please God. So without any further ado, let us quickly go to the book of Matthew's gospel, chapter number eight. And from verse five, you will read the story of the centurion. The centurion comes to Jesus, the Bible says, pleading with him. The Romans were ruling at that point of time, but the fact that he came to Jesus is commendable. Remember, we made a mention yesterday, Hebrews chapter 11, verse six, the latter part says, for he who comes to God. That's the key. This centurion, he came to Jesus. You know, when you connect with the source through faith, the answer is yours. Very simple. You know, if you want your light bulb to work, you plug it to your source, the power source. Jesus, the Alpha and the Omega. 
the one who created the heavens and the earth, the great I am, the El Shaddai, the mighty God, all that we need to do is plug into him and then you will receive that power which, is, which will enable you to tide over any situation. If it's a healing, you will receive it. If it's a financial breakthrough, you will receive it. You need to plug to Jesus. Oh, let's come back here. The centurion came to Jesus and he pleaded and said, Lord, my servant is lying at home paralyzed and dreadfully tormented. This was just not a physical condition. It was more of a spiritual condition, which kind of manifested in the physical because uh, the, the centurion talks about dreadfully tormented. So Jesus says to him, I will come and heal him. I mean, imagine Jesus coming to you, to my house. Whoa, that would be a great time to take a good selfie with Jesus. But remember, the centurion said, no, Lord, I am under authority. I know what it is to have authority. You just speak the word from wherever you are and my servant will be healed. My God, it's, the, it's a great exhibition of faith because yesterday I made a mention. Faith is walk and faith also is talk, speaking to your mountain. So therefore he released his faith by speaking. And the Bible says in verse number 10, Jesus commended his faith. He said, assuredly, I say to you, I have not found such great faith, not in Israel. Praise the Lord. Jesus appreciates your faith. A very interesting side note. Two places Jesus said, great faith, I appreciate your faith. Both were Gentiles. Faith has got the potential to rise above any circumstance, any situation, any people group, and even time. You're right. Faith can transient beyond time. What am I saying? Sarah, the Bible says she had received faith to conceive a child. She was past childbearing. But when faith hits her, she crosses beyond the time zone, becomes young. Her womb became young to conceive, even for that case, even Abraham. And she brought forth a child. So great faith, my friend, is to reach out to Jesus and Jesus commended the centurion. Let's very quickly go to the second example. In the book of Mark chapter number 7, verses 25 onwards, we read the story of the Syrophoenician woman who came to Jesus because her daughter was grievously vexed of the devil. As a matter of fact, the Bible refers to it as an unclean spirit. So, side note, there's a very clear indication of demonic activity with manifestation of sickness and disease. It's not true in every case, but in both these cases, there seems to be a very probable connection. In verse 26, the woman was Greek, a Syrophoenician, kept asking him to cast the demon out of her daughter. You know what? When she kept pressing in, faith, my friend, is to press on. That's very, very important. She kept pressing in. Jesus said to her, let the children be filled first, for it is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. The word dogs is not a derogatory term. It means pet, pets at home, a puppy at home. And so she said, Lord, I do not mind being that puppy, which picks up some food off the master's table. Long story short, verse 29, the Bible said, watch this. Jesus said, for this saying, so therefore, what you say is very important. Don't look at your situation and condemn that situation. Don't look at that situation and say it is hopeless, it is bad. If you say it, it will become your portion. But give God a chance to work on what you say. I said yesterday, faith inside that is words. The words of the Lord Jesus Christ. It is not my words. It's what the scriptures say. Faith is the container in which God's word has to reside. Well, he said, for this saying, go your way. The demon has gone out of your daughter. You see, again, the Bible says he appreciated her faith. Great faith, he said. So in Matthew's gospel, chapter number 15, verse number 28, the same incident, Matthew records. Then Jesus answered and said to her, O woman, great is your faith. Let it be as you desire. So the Bible here said not only did she speak, what she spoke was basically what she desired and she got her breakthrough. Praise the Lord. Two instances in the Bible 
where the Lord appreciated their faith. Would you be a part of that number? I want to be a part of that number where I can trust the Lord. It doesn't matter what my circumstances are, but I want to trust the Lord with all my heart. I do not want to lean on my own understanding. My friend, there are so many things to say, but let me start by also talking to you about a few faith killers. And as I made a mention even yesterday, faith grows. So if the faith grows, that means it is growing against opposition. It's growing against stress. I believe it is in the book of 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 and verse 3. The apostle spoke to the Thessalonian church and said, your faith grows exceedingly. Therefore, faith is like a spiritual muscle which has the capacity to grow. But just like any other muscle in our body, it growth happens only under resistance. Did you hear me right? We cannot just use faith to, to, to bombard every storm. Sometimes faith is given to go through the storms of life. Isaiah 43 verse 2, when you go through the water, when you go through the fire, that means there are, there are times in life the Lord wants us to go through the storms and faith kicks in right there just to go through. Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego, they were thrown into the furnace. The people who came to throw them perished. But the Bible says in the fire, the fourth person appeared, the son of God himself. Praise God. So faith is given not to escape trouble, but sometimes to go through the issues of life so that the faith muscle begins to grow. Having said that, because faith is a muscle, there will be resistance. And that resistance, by the way, is good because it enables us to grow from glory to glory, from faith to faith. So look, look back in your life. If there was any trouble, praise God, it has made you stronger. Hallelujah. And that's a good thing. James says, count it all joy when you go through diverse troubles. I said, what do you mean? Count it joy when I'm going through trouble. All he says is, that's a good reason and that's a good place to exercise faith, to put faith in your spirit and to walk in newness of life. Hallelujah. Let's get back. I call it faith killers. These things will kill faith. In the book of Mark gospel chapter 4, we, we know about the story of the seed and the sower. The, there was one particular time the seed that was sown started to grow, but the Bible says the cares of this world choked the seed so that the plant died eventually. Even in faith life, there are possibilities that these elements will choke. But remember, faith has to grow to burst through the storms of life, burst through the resistance. So I'm going to talk about some faith killers and definitely we will close on a good note talking about faith boosters. Take a pen, write these things down. The first killer of faith is found in the book of Romans chapter number eight. And if you're writing it down, write the word carnality. The biggest killer of faith is carnality. When I use the word carnal, it doesn't necessarily mean sinful. It just means walking out of the five senses. In other words, I will believe only if I touch. That's what Thomas said in the book of John chapter 20. He said, unless I feel the marks of Jesus, I will not believe. Thomas was walking in carnality. In the same manner, if we believe only after we touch and sense and we feel and all that, you are walking as a carnal Christian. But that's not the way to walk. The number one faith killer is carnality. The book of Romans chapter number eight, verse number five. For those who live according to the flesh, that means as a carnal Christian, set their minds on the things of the flesh. A carnal Christian can only see in this realm. I made a mention on day one that there are two realms, the natural realm or the seen realm, or the, and the other realm is the unseen realm. A man who walks carnally does not have the spiritual sight to get to see in the spiritual realm. And that's why walking carnally is dangerous. It's like walking the spiritual walk with blinders. You don't know where you are going. Verse number six, to be carnally minded is death. I'm going to stop right there. If you're going to walk carnally, my friend, death is inevitable. The Lord encourages us to walk in the spirit. Verse number eight says, for if you're going to walk carnally, you will never please God. 
So the right opposite of faith is working in carnality. If you don't see it, you don't believe it. I'm going to make a statement here. For a carnal person, seeing is believing. But for a spiritual person, believing is seeing. Therefore, choose where you stand. Today, if there is no finances to pay your bills, that may be a fact. But you're not going to open your mouth and say, God has let go of me. No, you begin to believe his word. And therefore, if you see through the natural realm to your provision in the spiritual realm, that will manifest in the natural realm. And that is faith. And faith pleases God. Carnality does not please God. All right. The second faith killer is wrong counsel. Write it down, wrong counsel. The book of Psalm chapter 1 makes it very clear. Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the ungodly. You see, the word ungodly means counsel which comes without God being the epicenter of that counsel. The only counsel which is life-giving is from the scripture. And we may have a different opinion of so many different people, different gurus in the world. They may have good things to say, but as long as it doesn't come from the truth, Jesus says, I am the way, I am the truth. If it does not come from the truth, it is not true. Did you hear what I said? It may be good counsel. It may sound reasonably good, but if it is not coming from the scriptures, it is not the right counsel. So you and I are bombarded right now as we speak through media, which of course is the primary information, a primary source of information right now. You know, it, we are bombarded with all kinds of information, but I want you to take care. Blessed is the man who does not heed to the counsel of the ungodly, does not stand in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, verse 2, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. The faith killer number two is listening to ungodly counsel. Therefore, please be careful of what you're watching. Please be careful of what you're listening to. Please be careful of who your association is. All right, let's move on. The third faith killer is in Mark chapter 11, verse 23. For assuredly, I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea. That is speaking of faith. But watch what Jesus says, but does not doubt in his heart. So the third faith killer is doubt. Doubt can kill faith. It's like having 100 horses on one side with a huge massive stone and 100 horses unitedly tied to this one stone can draw the stone without any problem. But imagine if you have 100 other horses on the opposite side tied to the same stone, you may have 200 horsepower, 200 horses of power. You may have power on 100 horses on one side and 100 horses on the other enormous power but that stone is not going to move because faith and doubt are pulling in two different directions you may say i believe god but if there's doubt in your heart that belief is offset by doubt listen to what jesus said he says be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart so doubt starts in our thinking process but believes those things he says will be done, he will have whatsoever he says. So how do I offset doubt? Doubt can be only offset by increasing the quantum of faith. So how do I increase faith? Romans chapter 10, I believe it is verse 17. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. So the more word you get in, the more doubt will get out through the back door. So how does faith work? The best way I can explain how faith works is like, you know, this coffee machine that we have. Uh, my, my, my wife makes some excellent coffee. There's uh, this coffee machine. You put these coffee beans inside and hot water. It, the decoction trickles drop by drop. And the aroma of it is, is excellent. So I believe it's the same. When you get the word in your heart and the Holy Spirit begins to work in it, it percolates and it gets into your spirit man drop by drop as revelation and illumination. This is what is important. So when you see doubt, doubt, your faith has to be higher than your doubt. And that's when your miracle will actually happen. 
That is why when you have faith, when you just listen to a message and your faith is skyrocketed, and then you realize there's some bad news waiting for you on the other side, faith goes down the drain simply because we don't have enough faith to overcome the doubt. All right, let's quickly run to faith boosters. Write this word down, faith booster number one, word patience. I made a mention on day one about three elders, patriarchs of faith. We made a mention of Enoch, we made a mention of Abel and Noah. Three of them, the Bible says, if you see that basic characteristic, it was patient. If you ask a farmer, can you expedite the growth of that seed? He will say, no, there is a time. So faith is always coupled with patience. Now, God knows exactly when to give you that miracle, but there is a time. There's a seed time and a harvest time. Many people, they have great faith and they have great faith with a very short shelf life. The faith dies. Why? Because they have no patience. You see, I had a prophecy over my life that I'm getting into full-time ministry. It came to pass after 20 plus years. That's right, 20 long years. Patience brings forth a very virtuous character called maturity. Maturity is very important in our lives. You see, I had requests, if you had seen my prayer request 10 years ago, uh, I've changed a lot of them. The reason being, I have matured. What I thought was most important, now I don't think so. We have changed. Maturity brings that. Therefore, my friend, patience brings forth maturity. And that's why the Lord says, faith must be coupled with patience. Praise the Lord. Let me move on. The next faith booster is to find somebody who will agree with you. This is very important. Matthew's Gospel chapter 18 uh, verses 19 says, Again I say to you, said Jesus, if two of you will agree on, on earth concerning anything that they ask, it will be done for them by my Father who is in heaven. So the point here is it is not praying with one another. No, no, no. The point is agreeing. If you're married, the best person would be your spouse. If you're unmarried, find somebody who you can confide in and agree. Patience brings forth a very virtuous character called maturity. Maturity is very important in our lives. You see, I had requests, if you had seen my prayer request 10 years ago, uh, I've changed a lot of them. The reason being, I have matured. What I thought was most important, now I don't think so. We have changed. Maturity brings that. Therefore, my friend, patience brings forth maturity. And that's why the Lord says, faith must be coupled with patience. Praise the Lord. Let me move on. The next faith booster is to find somebody who will agree with you. This is very important. Matthew's Gospel chapter 18 uh, verses 19 says, Again I say to you, said Jesus, if two of you will agree on, on earth concerning anything that they ask, it will be done for them by my Father who is in heaven. So the point here is it is not praying with one another. No, no, no. The point is agreeing. It is not just praying. It is agreeing. So the second food faith booster is if you have somebody to agree with you. There are times in life that it is possible that our faith may just sag down a little bit. A bad news comes our way. And well, that's not a bad thing because it, we are human. Sometimes that faith level can just drop a little bit, especially when you hear some bad news. That is why to boost your faith, you need somebody spiritual, somebody who, who you can confide in that together the other person can lift you up. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter number four and verse number nine says, two are better than one. If one falls, the other will lift him or her up. You see the power of agreement. The third faith booster is an interesting one. It is to have what is called your own company to find your own company. Do you have your own company? I simply mean people, the people group you are at home with. You don't have to pretend. You just can be yourself. That is important. Why? Faith can grow in that environment. 
You see, when Mary, the mother of Jesus Christ, when she heard from the angel and the angel said to her, you are going to be the God carrier. The Bible says she took off straight to Elizabeth's house. And there the Bible says as they greeted each other, the baby John the Baptist began to leap in his womb, signifying a spiritual transference. Praise the Lord. Do you have your own company to run to if you're in trouble? That group will keep you. That is why it is good to have a fellowship, a group which will nurture one another. But I thank God. I know OFC has got a great Kingdom Connect. You have a wonderful group together and I believe that you are doing what exactly I'm saying. The next faith booster, my friend, is write this down. Create a Kingdom Connect. Yes, very important. This will boost your faith. Because I am walking by faith, Bishop Peter is walking by faith. We could connect because we have the same template of faith. I hope you understand. Bishop Peter invited me to speak to you just because we have a kingdom connect and that common interface is faith. So if you want your faith to increase, connect with people who have the same faith base. I like the name Overcoming Faith Church. Do you know my ministry if you see the logo of my ministry, Sandeep Daniel Ministry, I have a shield referring to the shield of faith because I know without faith, it is impossible to please God. It is impossible to even live this life. Praise the Lord. So establishing a kingdom connect is very important. You cannot be an island and develop faith. You need like-minded people to connect with you, to synergize, to expand the body of Christ on this earth. Praise the Lord. The next faith booster is thanksgiving. You heard me right. Philippians chapter 4 and verse number 6. Be anxious for nothing. How can that be possible? Listen, that's what the scriptures say. But in everything by prayer and supplication. There is a place for prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. If you're into any science experiment, if you want to add two elements together, and to speed up this process, they add the third element called the catalyst. The catalyst's job is to expedite the processes of these two former elements. Am I making sense here? The word thanksgiving itself denotes that I'm thanking God for the things I have not yet received in the flesh or things in the natural. So you're saying, Lord, I thank you for that finances you're going to meet me with. Lord, I'm going to thank you because my body is healed, but you're still running a temperature, but you're doing the right thing because all that you are doing is calling for something which is in the unseen realm and that is faith. So Thanksgiving is a release of faith through your lips. So may I urge you whether Thanksgiving can come through a song, just sing that song of worship. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. Beautiful song. Sing those songs in the deep crevices of your heart. And if you're able to play some music which can worship God and bring forth that, that, that praise in your lips, please do that. Thanksgiving is so important. You know, even when feeding the 5,000 men in the Gospels, we, we read that people were thronging to hear Jesus and then they were hungry. Uh, he asked his disciples, the disciples gave, said, Lord, I don't know what to do. And the Bible says they found a small boy with some, some bread and some fish. And then the Bible says Jesus lifted up these elements and gave thanks to the Father. Praise the Lord. Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. And then they began to distribute the meal and it kept multiplying and multiplying and multiplying. You know the miracle. Quoting another incident. Even before the tomb of Lazarus, before the Lord can call Lazarus out of that tomb, after being dead for three plus days, the Bible says, he thanked God and said, Lord, I thank you that you hear me. Praise God. Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Thank God in the situation that you're in right now. Open your mouth and thank God. Praise God, my friend. Thanksgiving releases faith. The next faith booster is to understand grace in line with faith. Let me quickly explain that. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 says, For by grace... You are saved through faith. It's not yourself. It's the gift of God, lest any man should boast. That means, again, I make it clear to you, the faith that we have is not our own faith. So I cannot say it is my faith. No, 
the very fact that faith is first put in my heart is the work of the Lord, the work of the Holy Spirit. All that we are doing is exercising what is given to us. It's like a carpenter taking the tools given to him by his boss and he goes and works with those, those tools. All that he's doing is working them. He doesn't own the tools. Everything belongs to his boss. In the same manner, we have faith. We are only working and developing that faith. So coming back to this, faith and grace work hand in hand. For by grace you have been saved through faith. Now watch this. This is important. You may have great faith, but if grace has not provided it for you, you see, faith cannot apprehend it. This can apply to any area in our life. If it is healing, because we are healed, there's a provision given to us by grace to be healed. Faith can appropriate and make it mine. You cannot pray a prayer and believe by faith because it is written that just shall live by faith. I'm going to believe my f by faith. I'm going to speak to my mountain by faith. And that thing that you're believing God for is not provided to you by grace. So any amount of fa fasting and prayer and faith words will not bring the miracle to you. So remember this, that faith booster is to understand grace. So you understand grace. If it is written, it is provided, you can receive it. Praise the Lord. My friend, I believe and pray that all that I've said has made sense and you are blessed. There are so many things to say. Finally, as I close, I would like you to turn to 1 John chapter 5 and verse number 4. We are going to close with that great scripture. For whatever is born of God. Are you born of God? This, then I'm talking to you. Praise the Lord. We are born of God. We are not born of the flesh. We are born of God. Hallelujah. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. Inside you, there is the spirit of faith. Let, there are three important elements or dimensions of faith. First is called the word of faith. That's what we are preaching. It's the word of faith. The next is the gift of faith. It's a supernatural gifting given to us of Almighty God. It's a gift. That means you have supernatural faith to believe God for something. In the natural, you cannot. The third is what is called the spirit of faith. I wish I had time to explain this, but I've given it to you. The third is called the spirit of faith. As you continue to walk in faith, uh, you, you begin to walk it without thinking twice. It's like learning to ride a bicycle. Initially, you were conscious about riding the bicycle, but now you just sit on the bicycle, sit on your two-wheeler and just go. Even when it comes to your car. Earlier, you had trouble in shifting gears from two to three and three to four. It was a conscious effort. But as it became, a, it became a part of you. And now you don't even think of uh, changing gears. It, it happens automatically. So the spirit of faith is what takes over you. And you walk faith, you talk faith. It's a spirit of faith. Having said that, remember this, who, whatever is born of God overcomes the world. You have the three elements I spoke to you, inside you. And this is the victory that has overcome, not that will overcome, that has overcome the world. What is it? Our faith. You need to say hallelujah. It is your faith which will overcome. Whatever problems are in this world, you have the overcoming power by faith. Faith is the ability to see from the natural standpoint to the spiritual standpoint. Faith is the ability to believe God. Whatever he said, it will come to pass. So get more word into your system. You will see your faith supercharged to believe God for whatever he has promised you. With these words, my friend, I need to say bye to you. It was such a joy to speak to you from the word of God. We have all the sermons in our website and also in the church website, I believe. Check it out, listen to it, grow in faith, and God bless you. See you soon. Praise the Lord.